Hey folks, I'm going to attempt to try and show you how I do these eggs. Now, I don't edit, so you're going to get the whole video. But I'm going to try to show you how I do these eggs with the hot glue and what it is I do. So that maybe you can do it yourself. Now, the first thing is, is choose the egg you like. Now, I like these with this in here. Because I call it the breaking out. It makes it so it looks like the hummingbird is breaking out of the egg. So that's why I do these here. Now the first thing I do when I do these here is I take something like this file here. And I feel on it and like there's a rough spot here. I just gently rub across that and then bring that down through here to roughen up the surface of the egg. Just a little bit. You can't tell the roughness in it. But I want to make sure that it has some some roughness to it. That way the the uh, um, hot glue sticks better. And then any seams like this, I file them down so that they're smooth. And that just makes sure that your egg looks smooth and you don't have any seams or anything that takes away from the egg looking as real as possible. Now I had to darken it up in here a little bit because otherwise you get too much of a shine and you really cannot see what I'm doing because the egg will shine too much because it's white. So like I said, you bring this around and you just get rid of the seam. You get it rid of any rough spots. Smooth her out. And you give a place for the glue to adhere. Now I'm going to put you on pause so I can finish this up and it doesn't take a long time. Okay. I got it smoothed out. I'm kind of out of focus here for you to see. And there we go. I got it smoothed out the way I wanted and filed a little bit so that it has, you know, some texture to it that you can't really see. And you can use either one of those, uh, file things that I was showing you, or you can use just a fingernail thing and use the rough side. And as you know, when you file your fingernails, you don't see the roughness of the nail unless you went underneath a super microphone. And you just kind of do like this around it. That'll give the egg a little bit of a texture to its shell a little bit better. The ceramic egg so it's not real smooth and that'll give you that now the next stage is I'm going to use this pen which is not a permanent marker so if I make a mistake I can go ahead and wash it off I gotta pause you I forgot to get my water okay I've got my water now some of the tools you're gonna want now Normally, I use pencil to draw the thing on here, but I wanted to make sure you could see what I was doing. But you're going to want something that is pointy, like this instrument is, to make the flowers. You're going to want your glue gun, a pair of scissors, a pencil, or in my case, a pen. And you're going to want your ceramic or porcelain egg that you're going to be doing your artwork on. Now, after you've smoothed it out and gotten it where you have a little bit of a unseeable texture on it, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to figure out where you're going to place your hummingbird. So I want my hummingbird in the center of this here. So it's going to be a small hummingbird. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw out now 
And as you can see, when you're starting your hummingbird, you're basically just making a little bit of a G. And then you're putting a lump on there for the chest. You bring up the tail like this, and then you continue through to the back to make the back of the wing. Then you come part way up the body and you come straight out from there to make the top half of the wing. And there you go. And then right behind the head in this area right here, you can come straight up from the body like so to make the second wing and then come down like so and if that first wing was a full wing it would be about halfway on the wing and there's the shape of your hummingbird now the next thing you want to do now you do not want to paint this before you do this because it does make it hard for for the um thing to stick on there you want to take your glue. Now, wait, before I even do that. If you're going to make your vines rows, you might want to draw your lines where you want your vines so you can do that. But I like doing my vines organically, which means I don't like going by a pattern. I go by a pattern for the bird because that helps me. But I don't like going by a pattern for where the vines and the rose is going to be. Okay. Turn on my gun. It's going to take a little while for it to heat. So while it heats, I'm going to pause you. Okay. Once your gun is fully heated, if you've got a cordless one, however it is, you take from the back of the head here, and you start your glob. Just stick your gun right in the middle of the head, going from the back. And you start your glob. That is if it'll start. There we go. You start your glob. And you let it fill up that area you did. But then you stop pulling the trigger. And then just pull out. And if you need to do the trigger, just lightly do it. So that it makes the beak. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't start that, you silly thumb. And if you need to, run over the beak with the hot spot, not pulling the trigger. And that'll make your head and your beak. I don't know if you can see that, but there's your head and your beak. Okay? And you just make sure you've got that area completely filled in. Now, normally I don't straighten things out afterwards, but I'm trying to do it for you, so I did straighten it out because I'm doing this kind of backwards. But you want to make it as smooth of a move as you can, or else you end up with lumps and bumps and whatever else not in there. Okay, and then you do the same thing for the body. You start out on this part of the body and you bring it down so you bring a glob into this part of the body right here and you just keep on squeezing it and let it fill out your upper area and then you just bring it down until it comes down to the lower part of the body Try to do it in as much as you can in one move. And then that'll make your body part. And then you come down to the tail and you start from the bottom of the tail and bring it in. You just put a big old glob at the bottom and start pulling upwards. And when you get to the narrow spot, you stop pulling the trigger. 
and that will make your bottom part. Same thing with each one of the wings where the fat part is. Keep it there until it fills up the area you want filled if you need to wiggle it a little bit. And then just come straight down, let go of the trigger, and pull it so it pulls out into your wing. Keep it there, let it fill up that fat little area back there, bring it down, and take off from the trigger, and just pull it so it pulls out your wing. So then you've got your hummingbird there. Now to do the vines, you just take and lay your gun. And don't mind if there's a glob at the end of that. You can make it into a rosebud. Okay, so you just take your gun. Now I'm going to do a vine that kind of comes away from the bird there. And just a teeny tiny little glob and then just start pulling backwards just like so just start pulling backwards and that will make your vine now you probably can't see it real clear now there's a a vine up there and I'll paint them when I'm done with this so that you can see where they're at to make your leaf you do basically the same thing with the vine except for you just put the glob and pull off you put your glob and then just pull off so that the the glue comes out into a point put your glob pull off so the glue comes out into a point put your glob pull off so it comes into a point put your glob pull off so it comes to a point and then that gives you your little leaves I don't know how well you guys can see them see it gives you your your vine and your leaves and your bird is all in there okay to make the rose now this is the tricky part and that's where this comes in okay now I am going to put a rose up in this little corner and that's where it gets tricky the reason I'm doing that is so I can show you it better because that'll give me this little this little dip here to be able to brace my my thing in otherwise it'll try to slide around so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a nice big glob of glue in there about the size of a, a small bit you take the tip of your device here put it in there and just start spinning and just keep on spinning until the glue starts to cool and just keep on spinning and the glue will get kind of a milky color and then once it starts getting a milky color put your finger on top of where that blob is and hold the blob so that the metal will spin more than the glue does that way it'll spin right out of there don't push anymore just let the metal spin out just gently hold it and let it spin out and then that will give you <clears throat> that'll give you your rose that's how you get that little rose look now I'm gonna paint these so that you can see what I did more clearly 
So I'm going to take my little paintbrush here. And let's see what color will we put. We're going to do the... We're going to do the vines in the green and the roses in the red. And a nice color of red. Yeah, kind of a fuchsia red or rose red. And the bird I'm just going to paint white for right now. Okay. Now, to let you see how I paint this, how it looks when it's done. Long green. Long green. Now ah, this green will do. I can always paint over it. Okay, we'll open that up. Now, to let you see how I did this. Okay, I'm going to paint the vine. That way it defines the vine better. Okay, there's your vine. You see how it is there? Okay. Now, to paint the rose. Now, if you make mistakes and you got to scrape the glue off, make sure you scrape it off and then sand where the glue was so that you're making sure you're getting all of that glue off of there. Because otherwise it won't take paint. I'm just going to paint mainly the raised up part on the outside so you can see how the glob left the outer petals. And how the utensil I used put a hole in the middle of the glob. Now I usually put a darker color into that middle. But now you can see, get you in focus a little bit better. There. Now you can see how the glob came out. Okay. Now usually I do up the background color and the vine. I do the vines first and then I do the background color by taking and using lighter colors. That way I can use a slightly darker color than what I want. And then I can take and say I'm using the pink for the background. Like this pink here. What I'll do The 
is I'll put a little bit of paint. We need to get you back in focus. So you can see what I'm doing. See me? I'll take and put a little bit of paint onto the egg where I want the color. Just like that. But then I'll dip into my water and I won't wipe the water off. I'll let the water help me to get the pink into the cracks and the crevices of where I want the paint. That lightens up the paint color in there a little bit, but it helps to spread the paint into the little cracks that you won't be able to get your, your paintbrush into very well. And you just keep on putting your... paint on there. Use the water to help you to spread it. And you do the background before you paint your bird because otherwise you're going to end up with colors on, on the bird. In fact, I suggest you do the background before you do any painting on the glue itself. Now, there was a little glob that did get on to my piece right there from when I made the petal. Don't scrape that off. Don't worry about that. Because what you'll do with that with that little glob right there what you'll do with that little glob right there is you'll take it And you'll paint it the rose color. Because if you take it off, like I said, you'll end up having to sand that spot. And it's not easy to sand in a little spot like that. You'd have to find a way to get all, I mean, you got to get all of the glue off or else it, no paint will stick there. But if you paint it like that, it becomes a rosebud. So it's not a bother to you. So your gun just told you where you need a rosebud at instead of you telling your gun. And that's also why I like to do the things organically. And that's how you do it. Now. Now, once you do it all over, this is the start, and you get your colors in. When you're done, this is what you'll have in the end. And as you can see, the coloring in the background, it has light and dark spots. So it kind of really just... Gives it texture, is what it does, with doing the background the way I do it. It gives it more depth than texture. Now, there's places that I put, I didn't put the vines completely all the way around all risen. There are places that I put them so that they're down a little bit, which also gives it depth. And that's what you end up with when you're done. A pretty little egg with all kinds of little roses all over it. And a risen up hummingbird on it. And then you clear coat it about three clear oh, about three layers of clear coat on it to make sure you got a good solid clear coat. And that is how you get a risen decoration 
on the eggs without having to use plaster or anything other than what you may already have on your hand. 